Job creation is one of the promises the All Progressive Congress APC campaigned on with a change mantra in 2015 and the next level agenda at the 2019 elections. The Buhari presidency said it was targeting the creation of 3 million jo new jobs a year through industrialization, public works, and agricultural expansion. And in 2019, the president said his government will lift 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. Another plan is even in the works now, and this is the latest one uh, the pro out of the promises of the uh, Buhari-led government, it, and that is to provide 1,000 jobs in each of the 774 local government areas in Nigeria. Let's take a look at what that plan is all about. One man that is spearheading in that is the Minister of uh, uh, State for Labor. Let's take a look at what uh, the federal government says they want to do. 1,000 jobs per local government area. The nature of the work is rehabilitation, maintenance of public and social infrastructure. The pay for those who are going to be uh, absorbed into that scheme is 20,000 Naira per month. And the duration of the employment is three months. Well, there, it's going to be piloted in uh, eight states, five local government areas in, in the eight states for a start, Adamawa State, Bruno State, Ebonyi State, Edo State, Ekiti State, Jigawa State, Katsina State, and Kwara State. Those are the eight states which they plan to pilot it. But with all of the promises of job creation and this new plan, how have we fared as a nation? Are oh, more Nigerians unemployed than we had in 2015? Let's get to the conversation. I'm being joined tonight by the Minister of State for Labor, Senior Advocate, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Festus Keyamo. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Mr. Keyamo, for joining us on the program tonight. Let's begin by asking a critical question. Creating jobs was one of those hopes that President Buhari raised when he was asking Nigerians to vote for him. And I've listed a few of those promises on what he said he wanted to do. 720,000 jobs by the 36 states uh, in the Federation per annum, 3 million jobs per year, 740,000 graduates empowerment scheme. These are some of the jobs that have been promised by President Buhari. Let's begin by, self, uh, by uh, a self-assessment. Do you think the president has delivered on, that, on those promises? Well, thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, let me first of all correct, um, quickly correct something you said in your introduction, that um, we are starting the extended uh, special public works in eight states. That is not correct. Uh, that, the pilot scheme took off last year. What we are doing now is to extend it to all the 774 local government areas in the country. So the pilot scheme it's, um, has started and it's gone. So we are moving now to the entire country. So it's not only in eight states again, it's in all the 36 states and then um, the FCT. Well, let me talk about job creation and then create, um, correct an impression that people have about job creation. The major thing, trust of this administration in creating jobs is not about uh, creating opportunities for people to be employed in the public service. Maybe people are fixated on that, that someday somebody will call them and give them an employment letter with terms and conditions and say you, you should resume in March. The basic trust of this administration in, in the policy trust in creating jobs is to ensure that they skill up the population, the different strata of, of, of the, the, the populace, skill them up so that they can be self-employed in such a way that they can also employ you know, others too uh, into their small um, businesses. And by this, I mean the macro, the small, and of course, the medium scale um, entrepreneurs. That, of course, is the focus of um, this administration. But then coming to the uh, extended public um, works, let me explain it thoroughly for people to understand. So, uh, sorry, uh, now, um, as, uh, uh, there Honorable, are Minister, of society. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, before we get to the public works, we're looking, let's take it a step backwards, because this is the latest in the promise of jobs for Nigerians. For a lot of people, we will look back and say, we had several promises. In 2015, we were promised jobs. In 2019, we were promised jobs. And presently, unemployment rate is 23.1%. 20, Underemployment is 166 Things have not gotten better. More jobs are not being created as it's been promised. So the question is that, has the president performed on his promise? 
Absolutely. If you take all the indices into consideration, I think this present regime has, uh, uh, administration has outperformed what um, the projections should have been. Because you see, it's not that jobs are not being created. It's just that the populace is, is growing far more than the jobs are being created. And this is an age-long problem that we always, always had in this, in this country. You know, so there are so many platforms uh, by which this administration is creating jobs. The SMSs are there. Uh, Empower is there. The trader money is there. Small loans to businesses are there. They give small loans to different businesses at different levels that are there. The National Directive of Employment, over which I superintend as minister, we have so many programs under the National Directive of Employment by which we are scaling up the populace. So there are different platforms by which we are scaling up the populace for them to be self-employed. But then, of course, you know that this problem of, well, population explosion vis-a-vis -vis the, the type of jobs we are creating and the, the pace at which we are creating the jobs is an age-long problem. But we're going to catch up with that little by little. It takes time to All fix right. some of these things. So, and the, Minister, the, the, the extended pu public works we are going into now is one of those schemes by which we, we, we intend to, to reduce poverty and to touch the very bottom of the economy. All right. So, Honourable Honourable Minister, are just, not just they yet. Go before, below. Ju Honourable Minister, just a moment before we still go into the public works. Are you saying or can you give us empirically how many jobs as a Buhari government provided or created for Nigerians in the last five years? The statistics are not immediately available right now uh, because there are different ministries, different parastatals that are creating jobs at different levels. But the statistics are not, the entire statistics are not immediately available right now. But we are in the process of collating them. We're in the process of knowing exactly what uh, we, we, we have in hand, what we have to create more, and the, the, the type of lives we have to touch, the sectors so, of the economy we have so, to touch. Honorable Minister, let me give you a picture. So based on the promise of three million jobs per year, promised by President Muhammad Buhari, it then means that cumulatively, uh, we should have had a 12 million jobs in four years. Does it look like we have 12 million jobs in the last four years under the Buhari government? Well, that is not a question for which I can give a straight answer because, you see, you are, you are calculating jobs in terms of, for instance, people who have been given letters of employment. But I see, you see, the various levels of jobs we have created and the ripple effects of the, the, the jobs those jobs have on the economy and the people that have come under some of those schemes, either at the primary or the secondary level or different levels who have earned jobs as a result of some of those schemes we have created, they are not jobs, they are not opportunities we can easily sit down in one minute and collate on one table. So it is not a, 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 a statistics I can sit down here and um, give a wild guess. But what I'm saying in essence, I'm trying to put a picture so that you can explain because it directly falls on your table because your office is the Office of Labor and Employment. So uh, even uh, your uh, colleague, uh, the senior minister in, uh, on, in labor has said, Unemployment rate in Nigeria will reach 33.5% by 2020. That's what the federal government is saying. That is a statistic coming from your government, and it's different from what you met in 2015. And so uh, it's gloomier now than 2015 when your government took office. And that's the question, Honorable Minister. You should look at, the, you should look at one, for instance, the population available at that time, in 2015, you should look at what we have now, and I think you should compare the rate at which jobs were created. Like I said, it has always been the fact that pop the population grows faster, and those people, the graduates and those who come out of various institutions who would need jobs, they grow faster than the pace at which we create the jobs. That is basically what is happening. So, so if you it are is going not to look that it is gloomier. Yeah. yeah. If, if you, you look at the statistics, at we may be creating tonight. more jobs. Yeah, Honorable so, well, Minister. Let me explain. If you okay. look at the statistics, we, it may be that we are creating more jobs, but it is, it is that the people we are churning out every year into the job market are growing faster than we can you know, keep up with. So it's a speculation. You're not quite sure, Honorable Minister. I'll give you the numbers as I, as I see some So here. can you look Nigerians in the eye and tell them that on job creation, President Buhari has delivered? 
We have done creditably well, but it is not Eldorado. I can only say we have done creditably well, given all the indices, you know, uh, taking all the indices into consideration, we have done very well. So let's talk uh, with a few minutes well, we have maybe before should I, Maybe I should relay some of these indices to you. I want to talk about some of these the indices to you. For instance, they keep happening on depths on the depth um, profile of this um, of uh, this administration, and I find it extremely amusing. And I listened to Peter Obi before you know I came on air, and he said in 2010 it was less than 30 billion dollars, and that is not true. If you fact check it, our debt profile in 2010, when Jonathan took over, was 35 billion dollars. By the time the PDP exited in 2015, it was $63 billion. In other words, the PDP government borrowed $28 billion. That's why the fact that they earned more in oil in five years than any administration in the history of this country. As of 2019, we were owing, we, were, we had borrowed $81 billion. In other words, it was $18 billion more we had done in, in four years than the $28 billion the PDP did in five years. Now, the debt profile may be a bit higher than the $81 billion now, but definitely not up to the $28 billion that the PDP borrowed in five years. And guess what? The $28 billion was not invested in critical infrastructure with less earnings in oil, with $18 billion we borrowed in four years. We have done so many roads with the Sukuk bond, like you mentioned. We have, done, we have gone far with the second Niger bridge. We have gone far with so many critical projects like rail projects across the country, even with less earning, and the fact that we have borrowed money for infrastructural development. Now, where, where, is, it, where is the evidence of the $28 billion that the PDP right. invested in critical infrastructure? Honorable That's why I said, if you yeah. count all of these monies we have invested, invested in critical infrastructure, you will never know the number of jobs Nigerians who worked on the rail lines, Nigerians who are working on the, third, on the, on the second um, Niger Bridge, and on and on like that. Someday, very soon, we are in the process of collecting the statistics and we'll give to Nigerians. Let's take a breather. And when we come back, Honorable Minister, you will tell us more about the public works, as a lot of people think, is the 20,000 job per month, the job which is a temporary one for three months. How do we go about it, and what is the hope of these uh, 774,000 people that are hoping to get this job? We dig deeper into the job promises of the federal government. More from Mr. Kayamo after the break, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome back to the conversation. Let's get back into it with the Minister of State for Labor, Mr. Fessel Kayamo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who is in our Abuja studio. And we're talking about the Buhari government and the job plan. Have they delivered on the promises of the last five years and the plans that they have for going forward? Let's get back to it, everyone. Let's talk about the public uh, works uh, plan in the 774 local government areas. Honorable Minister, would you describe those works as sort of an odd job? Well, they're not odd jobs. Um, let me explain the, the uh, concept first of all. What this program intends to do is to reach the very bottom of the economy, the poor, the very poor, the unskilled labor, the unemployed at that level. You see so many, you know, every day, you have so many itinerant workers, unskilled workers who go out every day with shovels, with hoes, with just anything, just with their bare hands. They are manual laborers. They have no skill. They just want to get, you know, do manual jobs every day, carry things, carry blocks carry concrete just to earn a living. It's difficult to see any government in history that has targeted in this massive way that bottom of the economy. And this government has tried to seek them out for the very first time. And so the president last year approved what they call the pilot scheme of this program. We first test run it in eight states, in five, five local governments in those eight states. And we took off very well. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the effects on the economy and the very bottom of the economy, the president you know, approved the extended special public works to now get to all the 774 local governments in the country. So 1, 1,000 unskilled laborers, basically, wholly, uh, basically, I mean, not, um, uh, it's not going to be a total, maybe 90% of them, uh, principally 
will be unskilled uh, workers because that is the design of the program. And what are they going to do? They are going to engage them in the first instance. So people will not, should not think that it's just going to end after three months. It's just in the first instance for the first three months. Let's see how it goes to maintain public infrastructure. So we are trying to use one stone to kill two, three beds. At the same time, while we are getting money to the bottom of the economy, we want to also use them to maintain roads, to maintain public buildings, public infrastructure, and so many other things, even traffic control, depending on the need of that particular local government area. So I think I'm amused when I see headlines to say that we are employing Nigerians just to clear gutters. I mean, that is extremely mischievous when I see those headlines. So there are so many things that can be involved in, depending, even agricultural um, issues. For example, they can be engaged in irrigation. They can clear some irrigation paths so that water can get to so many farms in those local governments that are purely, purely, uh, purely agrarian and local government areas. So that's the concept. And let me say, there's a historical template for this. India, Bangladesh, so many countries in Asia, they use this template to lift their people out of poverty. Let me tell you today that one of the major reasons India quickly found itself out of the poverty, the bottom of the poverty index, was this social program, this, this kind of program that India also adopted. So the president has decided that we should integrate this program into the Nigerian economy and see how much it lifts people at that level out of poverty. So they are going to earn 60,000 naira in three months. And if you know what it means for people at the dry season in those areas, they are going to use this money to invest in so many, their little trades, agriculture, and so many things they do, and wait for the next dry season too. The exit strategy for the federal government is that at the end of the three months, if the president so wishes, he may extend the program, or the exit strategy is that they may be moved into some kind of agricultural, massive agricultural program. But then, guess what? We are going to take the biometrics of all the 774,000 Nigerians. So when I told you that we are in the process of collating data to know exactly what we have, what we have to deal with, because over the years, governments that came before us, they were not bothered about this kind of data. But now, right now, I can tell you that the National Bureau for Statistics, who is col you know, collaborating with us in this program and so many other ministries, about eight ministries, Agri, environment, and all that, the National Bureau of Statistics said they need 10, 10 persons from this 1,000 per local government to carry out comprehensive study for them, data collation in each of the local governments in the country. So we are taking, the National Bureau of Statistics is taking advantage of this program. Now, the Ministry of Environment is taking advantage of this program. Ministry of Transportation and Agri, they are taking advantage of these programs to also execute their rural programs. The All president right. said so, we should collaborate uh, with Minister, ministries that have sorry, rural content in their mandates. All right, so, so we are collaborating with all of these ministries quickly, to execute these programs. All right, if I may butt in quickly, the national minimum wage is 30,000 naira, and you are hoping to pay these people 20,000 naira. Are you bothered about livelihood? No, no, that, that's a, quite, quite a different thing. Uh, this is not a full wage structure as it is. It's not a full employment. It's just a temporary uh, kind of engagement to do public works. Uh, voluntary, temporary engagement. So it's not under the full wage structure um, of uh, uh, the federal government. That, so, um, well, again, that another question the, is... The minimum wage of 30,000. Uh, 60,000 for these people in three months, if my math does me right, uh, that's about uh, f over 40 billion naira in those three months. Where is the federal... 46 billion. 46.440 billion naira. Absolutely. Billion. Uh, is that money somewhere, or where is the federal government getting that money from? Because the president has gone to the National Assembly in one month, twice, to request monies to be borrowed to cushion uh, or the funding for infrastructure in the budget. So where are we getting the money for this very one? The federal government has made a special um, COVID-19 fund available to cushion so many of these effects of COVID-19. So the total package is actually 500 billion, but uh, about 54 billion or thereabout has been set aside for this program, including the logistics for carrying out the program, the administrative costs. Uh, we are also engaging banks. The president has approved that we engage um, four or five banks, specialized banks to carry out this project. Why? Why specialized banks? Because the banks will help us in each of these local government to register this one 1,000 persons, get their BVN, open accounts for them. And so we are using one stone to kill 10 beds there too. How? Instead of we deploying staff all over the country to start registering these people, we are going to tell them to go to the banks. As they are opening their accounts, they are also registering 
their names, the list we would have sent to these banks. So we're talking with the banks already. So the banks are going to help us collect this data in hard and soft copy and send back to us, which we are going to send to the Ministry of Finance, the National, the National Bureau of Statistics, and of course the Accountant General Federation for payment of uh, their stipends. So it's going to be you know, almost you know, foolproof because everybody's going to be paid by BVN. There will be no uh, issue of um, uh, people looking for some monies missing somewhere. No way. It won't be that. We are going to do that. So we are collaborating with banks on, on this issue. We are discussing with the banks, and very soon we are going to unveil the banks and the modalities for registering these Nigerians. Honorable Minister, thank you so much indeed for, for talking to us. But in, in 20 seconds, if you may round up in this manner, for some of your critics who think that because of allegation of failure in delivering the jobs, this is perhaps a knee-jack approach in de delivering jobs, which you call temporary for three months. In 30 seconds, if you may approach that, if you can answer that. People who are very insensitive about the people at the grassroots, people at the very bottom of the economy, they are, I can say that they are very insensitive at the pe for the people, you know, uh, in respect of people at that level. There are people who are part of the economy, they are a vital part of the economy. This is unskilled labor, and this government has sought them out. Just one last word, though. We have set up, I have uh, directed that each of these 36 states of the country and Abuja, we should set up a 20-man committee in each state to pick out these beneficiaries of this program. So it's going to be a local affair. It's going to be foolproof. Right. In that 20-man committee, you are going to have market, with the market leader, the leader of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the Christian Association of Nigeria President, the National Supreme Council of Nigeria Supreme Council, right. Islamic Affairs, yeah. the President of that state. You are going to have uh, uh, the Honorable National Minister. Director of Employment and Coordinator in the state, and on and on. So it's going to be a multi, you know, um, sectorial committee where they will have all everybody from every sector of the economy, economy of the committees, all right. of the com communities will be. We, 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 we need to leave it at that. Honorable Minister for Labor and Employment, uh, State for Labor, uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Fessel Skeyamo, thank you indeed for your time tonight and explaining some of these issues to us.